is that I've tasked my department with is an urgent review of Guillermo, which hasn't been reviewed um, since 2006, since it was first uh, promulgated, um, so that we are able to um, quickly get uh, those buildings which we don't need off of our books and the private sector or the government sector can better use them, develop them, redevelop them, uh, turn them into social houses, whatever they think is, is best for them, so that we don't have to sit with the problem of having occupied buildings, which we then need to go to court uh, to go and uh, reclaim them, which, as you know, is very expensive and often uh, time consuming as well. Which, de which definitely comes at a cost. Does Minister know by, un by any chance what the value of the hijacked properties are versus -vis the value of the properties that have been abandoned, the 10,261? I, I don't have those numbers uh, on me, Eldrin, but I'm very happy to get them and uh, provide them to you and the viewers of Newsroom Africa when I, when I have those numbers. Okay, no, we, we, we'll try and do a follow-up around that. So tell us about, like, it, when we look at potential partners and how to offset some of, of these buildings, um, give them to new developers, would we be doing that at a market value-related um, uh, uh, um, threshold? Or are we saying that considering that these um, buildings have been disused, um, some of these buildings have been hijacked, they can come in at a low market value, just so that we can get it off the books of government? Well, I mean, let's look at what we've done in Etigweni. Just last week, myself, the MEC of Public Works, uh, and the mayor in Etigweni signed a first-of-its-kind MOU between the three spheres of government. That said that we we all contribute to uh, abandoned or disused buildings um, within the inner city and surrounds. So let's put those into a, a collective portfolio um, and then put them to the market that the market can then, uh, through the request for proposal process, come back to us and say, this is what we think could be done uh, with this property. Um, and this is how we think it could be best used. And that may be for residential, that may be for commercial, um, that may be for non-governmental uh, purposes. And it's through that process that we would then say, well, you know, how does this suit the objectives of what we're trying to do, use public assets for public good? And if there's a residential development, we could say, you know, we're happy to embark on that. Um, but in order to give that asset to you for X price, we need a component of that to be for social uh, for social housing. Or if we're looking at the commercial space, we may want to take some of those uh, offices for government use. So therefore, we'd be prepared to discount the property that was longer in the long term. Um, it it benefits us. And then, Eldrin, there are just some properties that aren't worth anything. Quite frankly, they they exist in a shell only, um, and uh, those properties need to be used as equity, so to speak in inner city rejuvenation, which has seen massive property declines um, over the last decade. So, so, so we want to play our part. We're, of course, not giving away uh, the family jewels for free, mm. um, but we also want to be able to use the assets of the state um, as equity in projects and also as, uh, uh, to, to, cat to, to become cataclysmic projects, um, particularly the inner city. And we've had massive interest from uh, the property sector which is what's really needed in a city like Durban. The construction companies are really happy because they see the opportunity to, to build and contract and contribute. So, so that's our thinking, and that's a, a big policy shift for us, which is exciting because we've got to do things differently if we want different results. Yeah. Is there a possibility or an opportunity at all for social entrepreneurs? Um, they also struggle sometimes to find property, but are sometimes they don't have um, the necessary balance sheet to be able to secure some of these properties, yet they play quite a crucial role um, in our social fabric. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, that's why we've gone to the public, and not just to you know, property developers. We've gone to the public and said, what do you think we should do with these? You own them. They're your assets. They belong to the country. Um, how do you think that they should uh, best be used? And it's in that process that we can also create partnerships and say, you know, between Aldrin's company and, you know, whoever's company, uh, you know, maybe that you guys need to join forces and look at this project together mm. um, so that there is an uh, opportunity for new players to come uh, into the market. So it's very innovative. Um, it's a bit of a, a test pilot, if you will, but you know, we're all about new ideas and we're, we're all about doing things differently in this department. 
that we can, you know, see the desired results uh, that we desperately need for our country. Yeah. And Minister, then there's another one. This is in relation to also government property, but residential properties um, involving fam family members of uh, people who would have worked for the state. Um, How is the department going to deal with that? And is there any obligation on the state to actually um, house these particular individuals and their families, even though the person who was employed by the state is perhaps deceased? The only people, children, who qualify for state property is individuals who are employed in the state um, at that time. And when your employment is terminated, uh, either through uh, uh, HR processes or uh, through yourself passing away, um, that property then reverts back to the state. Um, we can't have a situation where people are able to occupy state uh, properties and that do not belong uh, or do not work uh, for the state. So while I have sympathy that people, um, you know, may have been living uh, with a loved one uh, or a family member during that time, um, that property must revert back to the state so that it, it becomes, uh, you know, uh, used for the purposes that it was intended to. Um, so we have also been very clear on that point um, that individuals who are residing in state property that do not qualify will need to uh, vacate them uh, so that they are used for the correct purposes um, and that the state only spends money on properties and, uh, and employees of the state that qualify for those benefits. Yeah, uh, Minister, just a final one. Don't know if you've seen this report as yet, um, but it's a long-standing matter. Um, Andy Klitama from the MK Party making the allegation of um, SK Africa um, in the Eastern Cape being involved in a corrupt um, a contract with the Public Works Department. He says that this is a matter that has been raised previously with the previous minister, Sikhle Zigalala. Do you know anything of these allegations? Absolutely, and uh, with respect, um, I think that he's being disingenuous by saying that the department has not done anything. Um, in the sixth administration, uh, 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 information was handed to the public protector, um, and that investigation is ongoing. I, in my capacity as minister, has also elevated this issue to the SIU, um, and it is being uh, under investigation. Um, and where there is wrongdoing in any contract by any individual, um, we will act and we will take yeah. action. Um, and that's exactly what we have done and what we will continue uh, to do. We will do so without fear or favor. And no matter what uh, the uh, individual's name may be, um, we will take action uh, against them, which is why we are also uh, taking strong action in terms of the allegations, serious allegations of the fraudulent tender that has been issued by the Independent Development Trust uh, to, uh, to bulking for a very large uh, oxygen contract of 800 million rand. Uh, I'm currently personally investigating that issue because of the serious consequences that it has for our healthcare system. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you are in this country, we will take action where wrongdoing uh, is, is, is alleged or found uh, to have been done. Okay, then thank you so much for your time. Uh, Dean McPherson there is uh, the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure.